These are all USB-C cables and they might all look pretty much the same to you and you might even think that it doesn't really matter which one you use to hook up to your external hard drives or to power your devices or whatever. But what if I told you one of these on the table is at least 16 times faster than some of the others. In today's video, I'm going to show you the major differences between all these different types of USB-C cables and show you which is the best to get if you want to completely future-proof your setup with the fastest USB-C cable period. What's up my dude, your friendly neighborhood Tony here and welcome back to the spare tech room where I try to help you make better tech choices. Now this video is sponsored by Silkland who sent over their latest Thunderbolt 5 cable and we'll be checking that out a little bit later on. But for now let's cover the different types of USB-C cables and then we're going to run some real world tests so you can actually see the differences firsthand. Okay so let's clear some things up real quick. USB-C is really just a shape of a connector at the end of the cable. What really matters is what's running through those cables. And there are a few main tiers that you're going to run into there. First up is USB 2.0, which is a super old form of USB. You probably won't run into it too much, except for maybe in some lower budget charging cables and things like that. But if you're trying to use USB 2.0 for data transfer or anything like that, it is going to be painfully slow. I believe the max transfer speed for a USB 2.0 cable is something like 480 megabits per second, which might not mean anything to you, but that's less than half a gigabit. Now this is going to be fine for charging some really low powered things like your earbuds or whatever, but not for anything serious. Now from there, you're going to see a major step up to USB 3.2. And this is where it gets a little confusing. You see there's USB 3.2 Gen 1, which is also known as USB 3.0. So if you have some older versions of 3.2 Gen 1, they might still be labeled as 3.0. They've tried to update those to all be 3.2 Gen 1, but if you have some older cables, they might still be labeled 3.0. But either way, those are going to get you up to about five gigabits per second. So way faster than USB 2.0. Then you go to 3.2 Gen 2, which doubles your speed to 10 gigabits per second. And finally, USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. That's 2x2. I know it's a horrible naming mechanism, but this doubles your speeds yet again to about 20 gigabits per second. And this is some real speed. These are the kinds of speeds you're gonna see if you have kind of portable SSDs. Most of them are gonna have USB 3.2 or 3.2 by two. But wait, it gets even better. Stepping up to the next tier, we go into cables that are called Thunderbolt cables. Now again, these look the same as any other USB-C cable, but they are way faster. Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 both top out at about 40 gigabits per second. So again, double what USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 is capable of. Most of the time, you're just going to see Thunderbolt 4 floating around right now. Thunderbolt 3 items still exist, definitely, but a lot of people have transferred over to 4. Either way, they're going to be fast enough to run external GPUs or super fast external storage or multiple monitors. You should be pretty set at Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4, unless you want to go all out. And that's where Thunderbolt 5 comes in, and that's what we're really going to look at today. Now, Thunderbolt 5, yet again, doubles the speeds to 80 gigabits per second, and sometimes even up to 120 gigabits per second with the proper boost mode. That is absolutely insane. But if you don't believe me, just wait until we get into the actual testing part. Now, speed is incredibly important, but what's also important is power delivery and what kind of video outputs you can run through these, what kind of monitors they can run. And most USB-C cables are going to be capable of up to about 60 watts of power, so they'll charge just about anything. But with USB power delivery, or PD, if you see that on any of your chargers or cables, that's gonna jump it up to around 100 watts or even 240 watts in the case of something like Thunderbolt 5. And that's gonna be fast enough to charge anything super fast. I have an M4 Pro MacBook Pro and running that through a Thunderbolt 5 cable into a fast enough charging brick, it will get fully charged in no time. It's super fast. And then of course there's video output. Now a USB-C 2.0 cable, is not really gonna work for something like that. And with a USB 3.2 cable, you may be able to run a monitor up to 4K 60 Hertz, which is fine. But Thunderbolt 4 can push two 4K monitors or an 8K monitor, which I'm sure a lot of you don't have just yet, but that's nothing compared to what Thunderbolt 5 can do. With Thunderbolt 5, you're looking at three 
4K monitors at 144 hertz, all running through one cable, or even an 8K monitor running at 60 hertz. I'm telling you, once you step up to Thunderbolt 5, everything else just feels like you're living in the Stone Age. Okay, let's go ahead and put some of these to the test. Of course, specs are great, but at the end of the day, what really matters is what these things can actually do. And in order to get the best results possible out of that, I've put together a little Thunderbolt 5 NVMe SSD. Now this is some next level stuff here. What I've got going in this device is an NVMe a PCIe 5.0 4x4 NVMe, the 9100 Pro by Samsung. This is one of the fastest NVMe hard drives that you can get. And I've got that running into the Acasis Thunderbolt 5 NVMe enclosure. So with these combined, you're looking at the fastest possible external SSD or external hard drive that you can get, period. Now, if you want to pick this up, I will drop links in the description box below. It's super easy. You literally just get the hard drive and plug it into here and you're good to go. But with something this fast, this will really show us what the different USB cables are able to do without any kind of bottleneck or anything like that. And for testing this, again, I've got my M4 Pro MacBook Pro, which has Thunderbolt 5 connections, and I'll be running the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test to get some quick test results from that, so that way you can see how quickly it really does offload and onload different files. Okay, so it's actually been a few days since I recorded that first part of the video here. I ran into some issues with my recording setup, but I was able to test out all the different cables, and I'm gonna throw the results up on the screen right here. So first up, I started with this cable here, which looks like a decent USB-C cable, but it is in fact a USB 2.0 cable. And it was so slow, in fact, that the Thunderbolt 5 NVMe drive wouldn't even work with it. So I had to bust out my old Samsung T7. And with that, we're looking at about 40 or so megabytes on the read and write speeds of this cable. Now, if you have nothing to compare that to, you probably don't know just how absolutely wildly slow that is. So we then step that up to another cable, which is this one here, which looks pretty similar. It's a USB-C cable, it's braided, but this is, I believe, a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 cable. And as you can see here, I was getting close to 2000 megabytes read and write speeds. So wildly faster than the USB 2.0 cable. Then we stepped it up yet again, this time to our first Thunderbolt cable, which is this Thunderbolt 4 cable. And with that, I was getting around 4,300 megabytes on the write speed, and I think it was 32 or 3,300 megabytes on the read speed. So very respectable, way faster than any of the other cables. But that's where the Silkland Thunderbolt 5 cable comes into play. Now, this cable is absolutely fantastic, of course, it's USB-C to USB-C. It is also braided and is of really high quality, so it should last you a long time. And the speeds are heads and shoulders above the rest. You're looking at about 6,500 megabytes on the write speed and almost 6,000 megabytes on the read speed. So it is way faster than any of the other cables, including Thunderbolt 4 cables. Now, of course, these numbers can vary completely depending on the hardware that you have it all connected to, but really this is all just a test to show you what kind of difference a cable can make. You could buy or put together the fastest SSD on the market, you could have it hooked up to a crazy fast computer, but if the cable that you have connected isn't up to spec, then you're gonna be wasting your money. So if you wanna completely future-proof yourself or just get as much speed and power as possible out of a cable, then a Thunderbolt 5 cable like this one here provided by Silkland is absolutely the way to go. Again, I'm gonna have links to everything in the description box below, so make sure you check that out. Now, if you really wanna take advantage of Thunderbolt 5, you're gonna need more than just a cable. I recently did a full review of a Thunderbolt 5 dock that I use right now at my desk for my MacBook Pro. It's seriously one of the most impressive pieces of gear that I've tested all year. So so if you want to fully unlock the ability of your Thunderbolt 5 cables and your MacBook Pro, then I highly recommend checking that video out next. I'll go ahead and link it right over here for you. Go ahead and jump on into that next, and I'll see you next time in the Spare Tech Room. Be good.